So we're told that f of x is equal to all of this. Identify when f of x is greater than or equal to zero. So pause this video, have a go at that before we do this together. Okay, so what we're going to do here is think about at what x values does f equal zero, and then we can test the intervals in between. Because when it equals zero, it might just touch the x-axis, or it might cross the x-axis. And then we can think about the intervals where it's actually greater than or equal to zero. So if we just set all of this equal to zero, so if we have negative three times x plus one times two x minus three times x minus five equals zero, we know that if we take the product of a bunch of things and it equals zero, that means that any one of these things equaling zero would make this whole statement true. So we know that x plus one is equal to zero, or, or it could, it could, or, two x minus three is equal to zero, or x minus five is equal to zero. And so in this first one, you subtract one from both sides, you get x equals negative one. Here you get two x equals three. When you add three to both sides, divide both sides by two, you get x equals three halves. Over here, you add five to both sides, you get x is equal to five. So these are the zeros. This is where our function is equal to zero. So let me just draw that on a bit of a number line. So there we go. And let's see, I have negative one, three halves, and five. So let's say that this right over here is negative two, negative, I need to make sure I have enough space. So negative one, this would be zero. And then I have one, two, three, four, five, and then let's throw a six in there as well. So our zeros are at x equals negative one, right over there. x equals three halves, which is the same thing as one and a half, right over there, and x equals five. So let's think about what is happening on every side, or in between and on either ends of these zeros. So let's test what happens at f equals, at f of negative two. So let me do that over here. Maybe I'll do it a different color. So f of negative two is equal to negative three. Negative two plus one is negative one. Negative two, let's see, two times negative two is going to be negative four minus three. Did I do that right? Negative four minus three is negative seven. Negative seven. And then negative two minus five is negative seven again. So what is this going to be equal to? Well, we actually don't even have to think that much about what it actually equals to. The key is to just see whether it's positive or negative. And we have a negative times a negative, which is a positive, times a negative, which is a negative, times a negative, which is going to be a positive. So this over here is positive. So another way to think about it is, over this interval, we are greater than zero. So the function might look something like that. It actually looks like it's it might be, it won't look exactly like this because this is actually a fairly, a fairly large number. So it probably looks something like this but when we go less than negative one. Okay, now let's think about what happens in the interval between negative one and one and a half. So I will do that in orange. So let's just do f of zero. Zeros tend to be pretty easy things to calculate or when x equals zero. So that's going to be negative three times zero plus one is one. Two times zero is zero times negative three, so negative three. And then zero minus five is negative five. So here we have, we have three negatives being multiplied. So this is going to be negative. You can even see what it's going to be. It looks like it's like negative. Well, it doesn't even matter. It's actually quite, it's actually quite negative. So in this interval, we are getting quite negative. Quite negative. We, I, I don't know exactly how far. It actually goes much further down. I haven't drawn any scale here or anything. But it's a negative over that interval. And now let's take the interval between one and a half and five. And I will do that in maybe something purple. All right. So let's just take f of, I don't know, let's take f of three. So f of three, f of three is equal to negative three times three plus one, which is four times two times three, which is six minus three, which is three. And then three minus five is negative two. So four times three is positive 12. And then negative three times negative two is positive six. So this whole thing is going to be positive. So over this interval, we are going to be positive. 
And you might say, wait, you just tested one number. How do you know you're positive over that whole interval? Well, if you weren't positive over that whole interval, and we, we are assuming that this is a continuous function, that it doesn't have any jumps in it, and this is, if you were to multiply this out, just a standard polynomial that would be continuous over all x's. And so if it doesn't have any jumps, the only way it could turn negative is if it crossed the x-axis again, and then you would have another 0. But we don't have any zeros. These are the only zeros that we have. So that's why I feel good that it's positive in that interval. I don't know if it definitely looks like this, but it might look something like that, depending on the scale. And then last but not least, let's think about when we are to the right of that last 0. So if I were to take f of, oh, I already used the orange color. Let me do it in a different blue f of, let me just pick f of 6, for example. That's going to be negative 3 times 7 times 2 times 6 is 12 minus 9. So minus 3 is 9, so positive 9. And 6 minus 5 is 1. So all of these are positive, but we have that negative 3, so it's negative. So it's negative over that interval. So now let's think about, and probably looks something like this. It probably goes negative, keeps going negative. But let's think about where, to answer the question, where does f of x greater than or equal to 0? Well, it's greater than or equal to 0 for all x's less than or equal to negative 1, because it equals 0 right there. So let me write this in a nice bold black here. So to answer the question, we get the x's that are less than or equal to negative 1. Or we have this interval that is between 3 halves and 5. So or 3 halves is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 5. These are the intervals over which f of x is greater than or equal to 0.